before all this happened, when was the last time you spoke with Lily? That morning. Our top story this morning happening right now in Carroll County. The sheriff's office and community members continue to look for two missing girls last seen near the Monon High Bridge Trail in Delphi. Where are Libby and Abby? These two teen girls have not been spotted in nearly 24 hours. More than 200 people right now are searching for these two girls. Liberty German and Abigail Williams were last seen yesterday afternoon when they were dropped off near that bridge. The ongoing search for Libby German and Abby Williams. This story is unfolding right now in Delphi. The girls were last seen near an abandoned bridge known as the Monon High Bridge just outside Delphi. It's heavily wooded and there's a creek running through it. Liberty German, Abigail Williams, last seen around 1 o'clock Monday afternoon near the Monon High Bridge. See, it's like fine here, but like when you get out in the middle, that's when it's gonna hit you, and then it's too late to get back. But she said there's a trail back there. Yeah, but you gotta cross the water. Hey, I'm all for crossing the water before crossing this. Don't go past the tape. But if you guys wanna cross and then get some shots, and then I'll, we'll work our way around to you guys. All right. After nearly a day of searching, a small town community's hope turns to heartbreak. The search for two missing 13-year-old girls leads police to two bodies. Police say the two bodies that were found in the woods east of Delphi on Tuesday were the two girls who were reported missing on Monday. 13-year-old Abigail Williams and 14-year-old Liberty German were murdered. The girls disappeared after going hiking yesterday afternoon. Foul play is suspected. They were last seen near an abandoned railroad bridge and where family members say they had gone hiking. The murders of two teens has the small town of Delphi, Indiana, desperate for answers. 13-year-old Abigail Williams and 14-year-old Liberty German. I speak with Liberty German. Abigail, can you tell me what they look like? A Snapchat picture posted early yesterday afternoon put the pair on that abandoned Monon Tall Bridge. About 24 hours later, searchers found two bodies about three quarters of a mile upstream from that bridge. They were along the banks of the Deer Creek in a remote area most hikers and walkers wouldn't go into. Where did they place yours and Abby's body? Police releasing new key evidence in the murders of Libby and Abby. The picture came from Libby's cell phone and was taken just before she died. This young lady's a hero, there's no doubt. To have enough presence of mind to activate the video system on her cell phone to record uh, what we believe is, is criminal behavior that, that is about to occur. If you're watching, we'll find you. Libby, was it more than one person that took you and killed you? 
Abby, do you know if they were a man or a female? We need to get the murderer of Liberty German and Abigail Williams into custody sooner rather than later. Abby and Libby, we're down closer to the bridge. Were you speaking to this guy on Snapchat? That was a clear now. Libby, can you tell us a piece of information that we can give the law enforcement to help validate that we're speaking to you guys? Did you see what happened to Libby and Abby? Libby, did he tie you guys up? Libby, do you remember if this guy had a smell? Can anybody please tell us who hurt Abby and Libby? Hi. Hi, Hi. Carrie. Josh, Hi. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is Hayden. Hi, Hayden. Before all this happened, when was the last time you spoke with Libby? That morning. We talked every day, multiple times a day. I know I didn't live with them. They had been in Indiana, and I've been down here for about eight years, but she stayed with me over Christmas break. I had her for almost two weeks. We talked on the phone every day, multiple times, whether it was actually in conversation, Snapchat, Messenger, Facebook posts, anything like that. We talked all the time. Very outgoing, wanted everybody to be happy all the time. She's got the best advice any, from anybody. She loves her sisters very much. I got my tattoo as a memorial for her. Um, this is a compass to show me where she, my way to her with the coordinates here. And put all the girls' birthstones. She's into music. 21 Pilots being her favorite band. Um, this is a post-it. It's hard knowing that softball season is starting right now and she should be out there. She's very, very athletic. She's always doing something, always on the go. Always. Like this pink guitar over here was hers. It was one of her first guitars. She used to play guitar a lot. Um, she played saxophone in the band. Can anybody please tell us who hurt Abby and Libby? Was there a murder weapon? Left Is the truck driver? Can you tell me what happened? Libby, did they tie you guys up? Libby, how'd they kill you? Libby or Abby, do you know exactly how they killed you? Abigail, do you remember where they placed your body?
She really excelled in that. Um, good student in school. Libby and her became closer like towards middle school. Um, they were both on the volleyball team together. I think they had a few more classes together. Um, I'm sure they knew each other and were around each other, but um, they didn't really become tight until, oh, probably fifth, sixth grade is when they first started playing volleyball together. So, you know, sixth, seventh, and eighth for sure. <laughs> Okay, we're doing Ghost Box session on Abigail and Liberty from Delphi, Indiana. It is May 6, 2017. Rocky, Josh, and Sean present. Are there any spirits that could communicate with us that know anything about the Delphi, Indiana murders of Abigail Williams and Liberty German? Can you say yes or no? What's his last name? Uh. Is still in Delphi. She had shared a post on Facebook that morning, Mother's Love Never Dies, and it was for the new Mama 2 movie which was very creepy, but at the same time, it was very ironic the time. She had Snapchatted me that morning because she had the day out of school. We, we would Snapchat every morning, you know, good morning, have a good day. When she responded to mine, she was still in bed, and I was like, why are you in bed? We don't have to, we don't have to go to school today. Why can't you, you know, and I went on to work, and then her sister called me that night when I was just getting ready to get off work and asked me if I'd heard from her. Probably the one, the worst, second worst day of my life. The next day was worse. Um. She'd spent the night over at Libby's house um, because she'd asked. Uh, we'd spent um, Sunday afternoon doing some um, pitching and catching and softball stuff with my family. And then uh, we met the girls, or the girls were down at the park. And by the time I had them loaded up, I could tell that they were already you know, doing something. Well, hey, can Abby stay the night? And I said, sure. She says, well, I got to stop at the house and eat clothes and our art stuff because we got some projects for work. And I was like, okay, fine. So we got to the house. Oh, that was Sunday, um, Sunday night, and dropped them off. And then she called me Monday the 13th um, in between my jobs. I worked at a nursing home in the morning and asked if she could stay until dinner. And I said, well, that's fine, but I have to work my other job until like 8. I said, so if they can't bring you home directly after, you know, or it's going to be a problem for me coming, you know, after eight o'clock, then you need to come, then I need to come pick you up sooner rather than later. And she said, no, they said that's fine. So that was our plan, you know, okay, have fun, see you later, love you, bye. And um, went home and went into my other job um, early afternoon, so 4.30, 5 o'clock, and got ready for the dinner shift. And I'd seen that I had missed a couple of calls um, while I was doing some of those things and uh, kept trying to call it back and wasn't getting anywhere with it. And then when I finally did, it was probably closer to six. And it was Becky saying, we took the girls down to the trail. They were supposed to meet Derek at three o'clock. They haven't, we've gone and we've looked and we've talked. They're not here. So we called the police department and they want you to come down here. I had everybody calling me, messaging me that night, thinking that she just was doing teenager stuff and went, you know, running around with friends or whatever. But Libby wasn't like that, and I knew something was terribly wrong. She wouldn't want to hurt anybody. She wouldn't want anybody worried about her. You know, if she had just taken off to meet some boy, she would have called me to say, Mom, I met somebody, and this is what's going on. I think we talked about everything, so. That night when they called off the search, I knew that something was very, very bad wrong. I just didn't expect this. I had myself convinced that they'd gotten hurt and lost and that they'd be found just fine the next day, but I knew something was very wrong. And then being down here, I, was, I tried so hard to get there that morning. And just as I was actually about to hit the road, I got the phone call that they had found the girls. 
so that was pretty devastating. So, you know, told everybody work. I'm like, I gotta go down and see what these girls are up to and figure this out. I'll be back in a little bit. And um, it didn't really work out that way because it just kept getting later in the day and we started posting on social media looking for the girls. And they finally kicked us out of the sheriff's department at like midnight. Um, so that was kind of a long evening. But again, I remember before we left, he said, you know, the late movie gets out in Logansport in like half hour. So we didn't really take it as seriously right those first few hours and get scared until Becky said, you know, it's dark and she doesn't like being in the dark. And that was when it kind of occurred to me that somebody's fallen, somebody's gotten hurt, they've gotten lost. Um, because Libby would not be out doing any of this at night time. By dark time, 9.30, 10 o'clock was when, um, in those later hours is when it kind of got a little, uh, a little worrisome. It was very strange because they had closed the entrance that I had known about previously and we had to go to a different parking area. And I had my brother meet me just in case. I was scared to go out there. So he came and met us and it was, kind of like it, the weather like it is now, cl really cloudy, uh, but no rain. And we started walking and it started sprinkling a little bit. And as we got to the first memorial set up there were the, where the sign is, it just started pouring. And I looked at my brother and I asked him, do you think that she's telling me not to go any further? And he was like, I, you know, I don't know. And I told him that she knew I wouldn't listen. So we kept going and it literally Bored the entire time we got walking out to the bridge. But once we got out there, it just stopped. So it was almost like I knew you wouldn't listen, but I tried to get on the bridge. I was going to walk just to the first platform so I could kind of see, because I've, I've never been out there, but I couldn't do it. I made it like three steps and was shaking so badly that I couldn't do it. Um, I got some pictures that were kind of eerie um, it was just, it was very, I could feel her there. It was very sad. It was a beautiful place and it's now just completely changed, you know. I don't know that it would ever be the same for a lot of people. It's hard to believe that that's some place that we would go here, you know anywhere to hike and just have a day outside and this should never have happened there. Morning search parties were coming back, more people were going out and I remember being on the phone and we were talking about the water level down there because I, I didn't know what it would normally be. Everybody just started coming back from the trails so you know a few members of my family came up and then some of my, uh, Blippi's family was up, and it wasn't until, gosh, I would say it had to have been, I don't even know what time, I don't even know what time it was by the time they finally got the whole group together, and everybody was pretty much there, and they all told us that they found the girls, and they were, they were gone, and, um, you know, we didn't really have a whole lot of information more than that at that moment, just kind of in shock, so... The girls were on the bridge and whoever this person was, was coming at them pretty quickly and they moved out of the way to let him pass. And I think that he, at that point, turned around and kind of corralled them off the bridge. As far as who, I have no idea. I feel like it's somebody local. I don't feel like, if it's not somebody that lives there now, it was somebody that has lived there most of their life or has lived very close because it's not, the way he was coming across that bridge, he had to have done that before. He was walking very quickly across that bridge with his hands in his pockets. I don't believe the girls were catfished. They, they were not those kind of, they're not those kind of kids. But Libby was never the type to be, you know, she would have met kids that she went to school with out there but not just some random person that she didn't know. 
I worry that maybe they had they saw something they weren't supposed to. I've heard a lot of stories about people making drugs out there and even that very that very day we're out there. So I, I feel that it is possible that maybe they saw something or somebody thought that they saw something that they shouldn't have and dealt with it. I've not seen who I think it is or it's you know, it's not somebody that I know. I can say that the backlash, the rumors and the accusations and speculations have gotten completely out of hand. Every member of my family has been accused. I've been accused of having some way, you know, some ties to something. And I, I've racked my own brain trying to figure out if there, have I done something? Have I made someone mad? Have I, you know, does anybody I know have an enemy that would do this? Like, I, I just can't come up with anybody. So it seems very random, but at the same time, like this person had to have known the area well enough to be able to be as comfortable as he was. One of the scariest things, knowing that he had to have been very comfortable and been there before and still nobody knows who it is, you know? Like, I wonder if he's still right there or if he's, well, you know, he could be anywhere, but I, it doesn't make sense to me that nobody can figure out who he is. Nobody knows, nobody's come forward. And I really don't want somebody else to have to go through this. Every minute of every day is a struggle just to get through. I think about Libby all the time, I wanna call her. I've called her phone a lot of times just to hear her voicemail. It's very hard to get out of my head at times. I feel like this whole case has con absolutely consumed me. 95% of the time, that's what I'm thinking about. It's been a struggle to try to keep myself calm for these two, my oldest. There's times I just wanna completely fall apart, but I can't. But I want like every minute of every day, I want to call her and ask her advice. What would you do? What would, you know, what, what should I be doing in this situation? Um, I just miss her really bad. Everybody says that time will heal, it'll get better with time. It's getting worse. I mean, I don't know if that's simply because we don't know who it is and he's not been captured. Um, but every day I miss her more. As time goes and we realize that she's not coming back, and we just had our first Easter without her, first softball season without her starting. Her birthday is two days after mine, December, so as the holidays come and she's not here, it's just devastating to even think about. I try not to lean on them too much because I know they're going through a lot too and they don't know how to deal with it either. All four of the girls have always been very close, even 250 miles away. I talk all the time. Some of my best memories are having all four of the girls together, even just doing nothing. It didn't matter. Everything always seems so normal and at ease when I have all four of them. Certainly not something you plan for. From what I've been told, they were simply taking video, you know, just having fun, video for memory or whatever. I don't know if the hair on the back of her neck stood up or what, but she felt that she needed to get him on, on camera, and she did. And I'm very, very proud of her for that. I mean, 
how she, I don't, I can't even say that I would have been able to think to do that. I think our obsession for crime shows, criminal minds, and law and order, that kind of thing probably put the idea in her head. Um, and I'm very glad for that because I don't know where we'd be at all if, if she hadn't been able to do that. The pictures that everybody has seen are like a still photo taken from the video that she managed to get. I don't know what else is on there. We still don't know the cause of death. We still don't know anything really that transpired from the time she posted those two Snapchat videos until the end. I mean, we don't know. And I didn't see the the Snapchats until after the fact, so. But even then, you know, when I saw them, there was no clue that there was something wrong. Everything was completely normal. The, the two pictures that we saw were nothing out of the ordinary from, you know, any, any other post any other day. I had no clue anything was wrong until Kelsey called me and, and asked me if I would, had heard from her. And I was, talked to her this morning, you know, that was it. So yeah, until I got that phone call, I had no, no inkling that there was anything wrong. Like everybody loved her. There's no real reason for anybody to not, you know, gravitate towards her. She was, had such a great, outgoing, fun, happy personality, you know, and, but she, and she didn't care, you know, she didn't care what anybody thought. Um, she kind of did things her way and if, if you don't like it, oh well. She was happy. And if, if there was something she could do to make somebody laugh or make your time a little better, then she was going to do it. She was the girl that would literally give you the shirt off of her back. Um, I still ask myself, why Libby? I mean, of all people, why? Because she didn't have a, a mean bone in her body. I really believe someone had to have at least grown up in that area to some, you know, have still have ties to the area and have been out there, you know. Cause just crossing that bridge, I mean, it's, I mean, if you saw it, there's like gaps in the, I can't imagine somebody walking even across there that had done it a hundred times with their hands in their pockets. I just, that would terrify me. So I, I mean, I would need some kind of balance or some, you know, something. I feel like they were very comfortable very very comfortable to be able to to just and it looked like almost like he was not running but coming very quickly across that he was moving fast to me he had to be very familiar with the area not only that but know that it was not going to be somewhere that where there was going to be a lot of people where the bodies were found um being in a secluded area I mean, how, but it was right there by the cemetery. I don't know why he wouldn't think that somebody would just come up on him, you know. He had to know the area, know the time for it, you know, that kids were going to be out of school, something. Can you tell me your name? You know, the bad thing is, this was probably always such a peaceful trail. And now, you know, this trail will be known for a double homicide of two young girls. I've had issues, even from the point of them cutting, you know, calling off the search that night. Why? Like, if, I, if it had been up to me, I would have been out there all night until they were found. I wouldn't have cared, you know. I understand the no Amber Alert in the beginning because um, he didn't think nobody thought that they were in any kind of danger um and it was february you know it was cold libby just had a t-shirt and sweatpants on you know so they should have been out there looking for them because they could have just been lost cold and hungry so i mean i kind of get that they didn't do the amber alert but the whole cutting off the search at one o'clock in the morning seems very off to me i don't i don't get that at all I wouldn't have cared how dangerous or cold it was. I would have been out there looking. So that that's a big question I still have. Why did they call off the search? 
I don't know that it would have changed anything or if it would have ended any different, but I just I just still can't see the point in cutting off the search at one o'clock in the morning. It wasn't that far half a mile from where the, you know where they were at the bridge and it just doesn't make sense to me. Abby or Libby, we're back down at the bridge. Abby, do you or Libby, did you know the person that murdered you? Yes or no? How can we find a piece of evidence to link him to the murders? Can you tell me where works? Tell us how he killed Abby and Libby. Cut him. Where did he cut Abby and Libby? What did he stab Abby and Libby with? Does he still have the knife? Where I'm down here, I don't get to see every day what everybody's doing, but I hear, I get a lot of messages and, and posts and comments and stuff about how the FBI presence is, you know, all of the law enforcement presence is scaled back. Um, they, they keep saying that 100 tips a day are still coming in, so why why the scale back? I mean, if 100 tips a day are coming, it's still 700 a week. How, how are they getting through them all? Um, that bothers me. I mean, if I could, I'd be there investigating myself or something. I just, I don't know. I wish there was something I could do. It's recently come to my attention too though that there are several other property owners right there in that area that have not been talked about, have not um, made public statements. Uh, one family in fact already has an attorney. There's a lot of questions out there. You know, there's a lot of feel, a lot of things that I feel like um, are not being answered, you know. Was he already out here? Did the murderer, did he see their Snapchat? Did he plan on meeting them out here? Was he stalking them? It sounded like a um, knife on it. So could he have took a knife, the knife back and buried it? Or just, just has it at his yeah, house? He has it in his garage, has it in his house. Where in the house is the knife? What shelf? Garage. Garage. Holy shit. Abby or Libby, do you remember any smells when the killer was attacking you? Thank you. Yeah, I remember even though you're sitting here talking, if you, you know, you're talking to girls, there's other spirits that can come through. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, look how much energy is out here. We got water moving. We got trees around us. You know, us ourselves. I think what we need to do is go up to the top, go take the car to the cemetery, because when we park in the cemetery, we're going to be closer to the crime scene than we are right now. Hook up the geo box and run a session. Well, let's go get the geo box and we'll head that way. Okay. Yeah, we're losing a lot of light, so we better get going. And what's bad is there, there's a killer still out here. So, you know, hope and pray that wasn't. And 
threw in trees. Threw in trees. What did he throw in the trees? Is there something here that points to? Oh, whoa, fish. Was the killer part of the search party? There's something, something's falling off. I swear I just seen somebody uh, looking around that tree. Right there were the flowers and everybody are. Somebody just peeked their head right around there. These two girls were out doing exactly what they should have been doing. 14 years old and enjoying the day in nature instead of being glued to their iPhones or the computer, the TV, whatever. They were out being active um, and this wasn't something that they did. You know, they didn't deserve this at all. Um, but I really just pray for justice. Pray that somebody has got to know something and they need to, to get that information to law enforcement so that this person can be caught and brought to justice for the girls. Abigail, how'd they kill you? But it's still very eerie and I don't like it out here at all. I feel like there's a lot of answers out here that we're being, we're overlooking, someone's overlooking. Um, but I can feel the girl's presence here, it's weird. I almost wanna listen for him. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time, four years that we've waited for answers. Um, I don't think we've gotten really anywhere in that four year time period. More confusion, a lot more questions than we've gotten answers. So it's very surreal to be here now and still not know what's going on, what happened. It was almost as if Libby was telling me not to come out here. Um, but I said, no, I, I, it was something I had to do. You know, I had to come out here. I had to see this place for myself because I'd never been out here before. Um, by the time we got out here though, I couldn't even take three steps onto the bridge. Like it was just very overwhelming. Very few times I've been here, there have been quite a few people out here, which is kind of surprising considering I didn't even know the place existed. I have not heard anything since they released the second sketch, or was it April of 18, 19? Haven't heard anything since then. And that was supposed to, like, we thought that that was going to be the big new, that was what was going to solve the case. You know, they, they released this new sketch, and I think it just added more mud to the water, really. Um, I think it confused a lot more people. And we still haven't found the guy, so. Um, honestly, that was the last I've heard anything, though. They didn't do a press conference last year, and I haven't heard. They've, other than keeping the story out, like, news-wise and doing different interviews and things, there hasn't been much talk really, which is very, very frustrating. I, w I, w I mean, I want answers. I don't want just talk, but um, I feel like the more people talk about it, at least there's more of a chance that we're gonna find who did this. They were found just up this way on the creek bank. They were on the other side, which means they had to cross all the way over there. And I don't know how they did that. I could never do it. Um, I assume also from the details that we do know that when we hear the DTH command that that would be the hill on that side of the bridge. So I walked down through on that side and up to the creek. So it's very, to me, it's very, how the hell did this even happen? Like. Number one, how did they get across that bridge? Because I don't know how they could even walk across it. That's terrifying. But then even the way that he commands them, DTH, doesn't sound that forceful. But the hill over there is pretty steep. Um, 
And I remember it looking like someone had fallen, maybe slid down the hill. I think it probably would have been a beautiful place prior to all of this though, which is really sad. Crazy to me to think that they came from somewhere along here and ended up all the way over there. I don't know how he was able to corral them across. They, I, to me, they would have almost had to been all the way over there. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine trying to corral two girls from the middle of this bridge and not one of them falling off or pushing him off. You know what I mean? My, my whole question was, maybe you can shed some light on this, is, you know, how do you think one guy gained control of those two? I still really have a hard time with the fact that one person could actually do that unless he had one of the girls. Like if he had actually restrained one of the girls, he would be able to have led the other one away pretty easily because she would never have walked away from her best friend. That he probably had a hold of Abby and was able to then lead Libby because Libby was not going to walk away. Um, she would not. I, she wouldn't have left her. I think she probably did exactly what she thought she was going to do whatever he wanted her to do and they would get away. Obviously that wasn't the case, but that's the only way I can think that it even happened. He had some way of threatening them. He had to, if it was one person and one person only, there had to have been some for him to be able to have lured the girls that easily. Because like, this is pretty narrow. I mean, you're talking three people that you're going to try to force across that bridge I don't I don't really see it it would have had to have been pretty well contained or not even so they weren't scared you know but from what I've heard that they were already on on alert that he was creeping them out so I don't think that they would have just went willingly and I guess in my mind that he probably had control of Abby and That's that right. just that just brought Libby along because she wouldn't walk away from him. That's the one thing I was thinking is he had to gain control of one of the girls fairly quick in order right. to control both of them. Because they were already creeped out when Libby was recording. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like, yeah, he probably would have had. And from the, the way Libby was taking pictures, of, it seems that she was in front of Abby. So Abby would have been further back on the bridge and able for him to grab a hold of her and then lead Libby along the way. I guess that makes sense. It scares me just looking from this angle, how far down that is. Yeah, it's far. I can't imagine. It's crazy to me though, that this bridge is even still here. Like there's no use for it, no reason whatsoever. Why is it even, why haven't they just torn it down? Knowing it's a danger, you know? I don't know that it's going to be law enforcement that finds him. I think that it very well could be a private eye or um, just a random person that puts something together because it seems like there's an awful lot of secrecy and um, not really answering anything over the last four years. They keep everything so close to vest. Well, four years later, if that hasn't worked, how about we try a new tactic? Really, you know, I don't know what it would be, but I wish something would happen. Maybe fresh eyes on the case would help. I don't know. Might be a little late for that, really. <laughs>